Hello everyone and welcome to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to start a bucket server in Minecraft 1.11. Now this won't be a 24 hour bucket server which means it'll only be up when your computer's running and it uses your own computer's resources and your own internet connection. So if you have a bad computer this probably isn't the best option for you to be honest because it's going to use your own computer's resources and bucket servers take a lot of resources. Also if you want to give your IP out the IP of the server out to everybody you don't want to just keep it to your friends and family this server isn't for you as well because it uses your own IP address and if the wrong people get their hands on your IP address they can do some very very bad things with it including taking your internet completely down and even possibly finding out where you live but luckily I do have a solution for you if you want a bucket server that's up all the time that you can give the IP out to everyone and that does not use your own computer's resources you can go to the breakdown.xyz slash apex get an awesome 24 hour Minecraft server running bucket for just $5 per month. Less than like a meal you can get an amazing Minecraft server that has DDoS protection that's going to be up all the time with a great support team behind it. We've been using Apex for years and we absolutely love them wholeheartedly. So go check it out, thebreakdown.xyz slash Apex, first link down below. Now, if you've got a decent enough computer with probably around 8 gigabytes of RAM, if not 16 gigabytes of RAM, and you're okay with just playing with your close friends and family, let's go ahead and start a bucket server. First off, we, uh, well, we need to download bucket. To do that, go to the second link down below, thebreakdown.xyz slash bucket, pretty easy stuff. Then once you're here, you want to click download craft bucket 1.11. It'll take us off to AdFly where we have to wait 5 seconds and once it's done up in the top here, we can go ahead and skip the ad. And then it should automatically download Craft Bucket. It's going to redirect and ask you all of these things. Just cancel and close out and leave and all that stuff. And then finally, down here at the bottom, we can keep Craft Bucket. So it's going to download it, and boom, there it is on our desktop. Now we can minimize out of our browser, come here to where it says Craft Bucket-1.11. We want to create a new folder, and we can title it whatever we want. I'm just going to name mine bucket server boom and then drag the file we downloaded into there it might take it a second um, it usually does but then eventually boom there it'll go now we need to create a new so right click new and we want to create a text document and uh, you can just not name it anything it doesn't need to be named anything we then need to open our new text document and go to the description of this video. So if for whatever reason, you're just now going to the description of the video, you need to now, because there's this code down below. Java-XMX, when it doesn't matter what it is, it's in the description down below. Paste it in this new text document you created, right? So just copy it from the description, paste it in there. You wanna then file, save as, in the same folder right here, where new text document's at, where crap bucket's at. We want to save this as RUN, run.bat, and then we want to do save type as all files. That's extremely important. Run.bat, B-A-T, all files as the save type. Then click save. And now if we close out of this, we can come here and we have this Windows batch file. We then want to double click on it. It'll open up a command prompt thing. Go through, boom press any key to continue so press any key continue it as you can see pulled some stuff into this folder we then need to go into EULA which is just a text document open that up go to this link and make sure your server is not gonna break any of the things prohibited by Minecraft's EULA once you've done that and you know it's not this one is it go ahead to EULA equals false and change false to true T-R-U-E EULA equals true do file save close out of this and then click on your run file again It'll then open up the same black box command prompt file we're used to, except this time, boom! It adds so much more stuff in, it's letting it through, it's generating our spawn area, going through and doing all that, and eventually, it'll say done. Once it says done, right there it is, D-U-N-E, done. I don't know why I spell everything, I just do. We type stop, stop the server, and it will close out of command prompt right there. So. Your server is set up, and if you wanted to just play on it with someone on your own internet connection, just go in, type in localhost into Direct Connect on Minecraft, and it'll work. But if you don't, if you want to play with people outside of your own house, go ahead, come over here, type in CMD. It'll open up this little thing right here that says Command Prompt. Right-click on it and run that as an administrator. And then in the Command Prompt, we want to type IP config. IP-C-O-N-F-I-G. 
hit enter, and it'll give us a bunch of information, but we're only concerned with two numbers, our default gateway and our IPv4 address. Now we want to come back over into this bucket server folder we have with all of our stuff in it, and we want to find server.properties, right? Right down here it is. You might need to right click on it and then open it with notepad. But once you've got it open here in Notepad, you want to find server IP, and next to server IP, you want to type your IPv4 address. In my case, that's 192.168.0.120, right there. We then want to file and save that, close out of server properties, and we want to keep this command prompt up. We want to go to our browser. So. Now, open a new tab on your browser and then type in your default gateway into the search bar, into the address bar where normally you would see like YouTube.com. For example, up there, type your default gateway. In this case, 192.168.0.1, hit enter. It opens up a login box. Now, in this login box, what you want to do is go to the, I believe it is the third link, if not the fourth link down below, it's router passwords. And you want to find the make and model of router you have. Say you have a Netgear router and say it is a Netgear WNR, for example, version. So WNR right here. We can see that the username for that would be admin and the password would be password. So you'd come back over here and enter that. You want to find your physical router in your house see what the make of it is. See who made it, Netgear, uh, Intel, whatever. Intel makes a few routers, I think. Uh, what kind of router it is, for example, a WNR, and then from there you want to find your username and password. If you can't find it, then contact whoever set up a net the network in your house. It could be your mom, could be your dad, could be your sister, brother, significant other, whoever it is, contact them and they should know. If they don't, contact your internet service provider. Your ISP should be able to help you in uh, kind of at least resetting the username and password on your router. But once you've got it, we need to go ahead and log in. So I'm gonna do that and I'll meet you guys after I've logged in. Once you've logged into your router, you'll see something exactly or most likely completely different from what's on my screen right now. If it is completely different, that's no worry. We're looking for port forwarding slash port triggering, right? For me, for example, it's forwarding and then it's virtual servers. That makes absolutely no sense, right? Why is it virtual servers? I honestly don't know, but we're looking for forwarding and then port forwarding apps and gaming. Apps and gaming is the exact same thing. Virtual servers, that's the exact same thing. If you can't find it anywhere in your router and you're just running out and you don't know what to do, come over here to uh, the, I believe, fourth link down below, and that is setuprouter.com, and uh, find the kind of router you have. For example, if you want uh, a hot router, what even is that? I don't know. Then click on whichever kind you have, and here you'll be able to get the manual, screenshots, all of that stuff to actually be able to find port forwarding in your router's manual and then, you know, do it on your router, right? But once you find where you port forward at, just simply add a new port forward and then you can uh, do this. The port forward for service port is 25565. That might also be called external port. It might be called port one, but whatever it is, 25565. For internal port, it might also be external port, service port, doesn't matter what it is, 25565 there as well. Whatever port, if it says port, 25565, that's what you wanna put in there. For your IP address, this is gonna be your IPv4 address. In my case, 192. 168.0.120. For you, it's probably going to be a completely different number, but that's okay. For protocol, it's going to be all, or it could be TCP slash UDP, or it could be both. You might have a both option, and if you do, click that, but you want to make sure it's both TCP and UDP. For me, all status is enabled, and click save, and boom. Once you're here, once you've gotten that done, the hard part is over, assuming you did it correctly. Make sure you're not port triggering something completely different. You want to be port forwarding, apps and gaming, something like that. So we're going to find it and then do what I just did. After you know that though, we can minimize our browser. We can close out. Well, we'll leave command prompts open, but we also want to run our server. And while that's happening, we are going to open up Minecraft 1.11. And what we're going to do is uh, join our server, make sure it's up and running, make sure it looks good, make sure it's what we want. And then after we've done that, I'll show you how your friends will join it. We're going to join it a different way than your friends will. Once we're in Minecraft, we can join the server with Direct Connect. We're going to join using our IPv4 address over here. For me, that was 192.168.0.120. We can then click join. 
and it will put us into uh, Minecraft 1.11. You can see that we joined over here, and actually joined and then left and then joined again. So uh, I am in this game, definitely. Joined in using the IPv4 address, which is how you and anyone on the same internet connection as you, the, in the same house as you, can join. But what about your friends? What about your family that lives in Nebraska and say you live in Idaho? How is How are they going to join, right? Well, it's pretty easy. Just go ahead, disconnect from the server here. We want to go back to our web browser, go to Google, and then just type IP. Just type into Google IP, right like that, and it will take us to this, where you can see two numbers for me. For you, it'll be a bunch of different numbers. It'll be similar to your IPv4 address uh, as far as like how the numbers are spaced out. But for me, it's just two numbers because people can do bad things with your IP address. I don't want to give it to you guys because people can do very, very bad things with it. That's why Apex is such an appealing option because you don't have to worry about someone compromising your own internet. Anyway, let's go ahead, copy our IP address, come back over to Minecraft, and then we can direct connect using our IP address. Now, again, this is uh, how your friends will join it. So the number you have here is what you want to get for your friends, right? Give to your friends. And then also, this is uh, blocked off. Again, last two letters, still the same, but uh, everything else is blocked off because you could do bad things with an IP address. We join in, we can see yet again that I joined the game over here, so you guys know it is in the same server, and uh, your Minecraft 1.11 server running bucket is up. Boom! There you go. If you want to know how to install bucket plugins, there's actually a uh, video on your screen right now that will show you exactly how to install plugins, get them running on your server, things like that. But uh, yeah, this has been the breakdown. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do want a server that doesn't use your own computer's resources, that's up all the time, then you can give the IP to everyone. Go to thebreakdown.xyz slash apex. That is the first link down below. Check it out and get yourself an awesome 24-hour server so you don't have to worry about any of the hassle of running a server other than uh, stuff in game. So yeah, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. This has been the breakdown, and I am out, guys. Peace.